Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on Wreath. Today we're going to be going through task 6, web server exploitation. We'll be picking up right where we left off in the last video. In the previous task, we found a vulnerable service running on the target, which will give us the ability to execute commands on that target. The next step would usually be to find an exploit for this vulnerability. There are often exploits available online for known vulnerabilities, and we will be covering we will cover searching for these in an upcoming task. However, in this instance, an exploit is provided here, and we'll take a look at that in just a moment. Start by cloning this or cloning the repository. This can be done with the following command. So we'll go ahead. I am going to press Q to exit that mode on Tmux, and I'm going to make dir exploits cd exploits i do this just to keep it organized and i should have done it with my scans but i'll fix that in a little bit we can go ahead however and copy this over again you can do this section at least in the attack box i do not recommend it though if you can you should use your own cali machine and there we go we can see that we've cloned that and if i do an ls we can see that we have a folder for that cve this creates a local copy of the exploit on our attacking machine. Navigate into the folder and then install the required Python libraries. So we can go ahead, here we can just copy this. Makes it nice and easy. I don't recommend doing this with exploits typically. This is a known good exploit and it's provided by trusted sources. You should not just blindly install these otherwise, so just keep that in mind. I'll go ahead and paste this and I'm gonna hit yes. Um, so with a fresh, uh, install of Kali, I do not have Python three pip, so I'll go ahead and let that install. Um, and we should be good with that. Um, present working directory. Uh, let's see. So I only need the first part of this command. I want to make sure that we did install that. I don't think I saw pip run. So we'll let that go ahead and run there. So if you're doing this on a fresh installation, you'll have that same issue. And let's see, if this doesn't work, you may need to install pip before downloading the libraries. This can be done with sudo apt install python3 pip. Again, I didn't have to type sudo because I'm running this as root, um, and I just did that in line already. The script should already be executable, um, and we'll check that. Looks like it is. But if not, add the executable bit, uh, chmod plus x, and then you need to select what you're adding that executable bit to. Never run an unknown script from the internet, what I said earlier. Read through the code and see if you can get an idea of what it's doing. Don't worry if you aren't familiar with Python. In this case, the exploit was coded by the author of this content and is being run in a lab environment, so you can infer that it isn't malicious. It is, however, good practice to read through scripts before running them. You should know what you're running. Once you're satisfied, or satisfied uh, that the script will do what it says it will, run the exploit against the target, and we can do that with this command. In this specific case, I'm not going to break down what the script is doing. I do encourage you to read through it on your own. Um, it is very interesting, very basic uh, as well. And even if you are new at reading code, this is fairly straightforward. For the sake of this content, though, I'm going to go through and keep uh, moving along. So we can do that with period forward slash CVE. And I'm going to tab complete. And then our target IP, which I think in this case was 10... 200 let me scroll up and find out 10 200 72 200 and there we go we can see that uh it should be vulnerable benign payload has been executed the target is vulnerable and a pseudo shell has been obtained type commands to have them executed on the target so we have a kind of a command prompt kind of let's see so run the exploit and obtain a pseudo shell on the target uh, which user was the server running as? We can find out who that is by running who am I, and it looks like we have root. And there we go. Success. We won't uh, need to escalate or escalate privileges here, so we can move on to the next step in the exploitation process. Before we do that, though, uh, nice though this pseudo shell is, it's not a full reverse shell. It's not fully interactive, and it's really not helpful for us for the long term. Uh, get a reverse shell from the target. You can do this manually or by typing shell into the pseudo shell and following the instructions given. I'm going to do it by typing shell because that sounds like the easier method. Let's see. Uh, please enter the IP. Uh, let's see. Please enter the IP address for the shell. 
Uh, so it looks like we need to type in, I'm going to guess our IP address on the network. Uh, let's do IP space A, and I'm going to check my IP. So I'm 10, 50, 73, 19. So we'll copy that. We're going to try this way. I'm not sure how Mirland has this coded. Okay, so I need to have a reverse shell running. Um, I'm going to start my reverse shell. Uh, netcat, uh, let's see, do I have RL wrap installed? I do not. Uh, so we'll do netcat LVNP, uh, and then we will do port, uh, let's do 8080 to make things. Actually, we're going to do delete so that I know that won't compete with anything. And then we'll go back to that shell. Enter in that port number. Okay, so it is having us uh, start the netcat listener. We'll go ahead and press enter. And we should have, there we go. Who am I? We can see we're running this as root. It's not fully interactive. Um, stabilize the reverse shell. There are several techniques for doing this detailed here. We'll go ahead and do that. This is just going to be upgrading that. Uh, let's see. So we have our netcat shell. Netcat shell stabilization. We're going to do this with Python to make it easy. So we'll do Python dash C import. So I'm doing this right here. Uh, import PTY. PTY dot spawn bin bash. So let's see. So we don't have Python. Let's try if we have Python 3. So I'm going to copy that, and we'll see if this works. Okay, there we go. So now we have a bash shell. Uh, so if this is the case, for, yeah, we just replaced that. Uh, this is another room that Mirland has made, um, and it is uh, wonderful to, for talking about different types of shells like this. I will have this linked in the video description for this video. I do recommend going through it. It's very, very nice, and it's a nice and detailed walkthrough of understanding various uh, different types of shells you can work with. So steps two is export term equals X term. There we go. Um, this will give us access to the term commands such as clear. And then finally, and most importantly, we will background the shell using control and Z. So we backgrounded it and then we'll do STTY raw minus echo and then foreground. Who am I? And there we go. We can see that we have a better shell. And I'm able to clear and things like that. I will go ahead and click back over here. So we mark that as complete. Now for a little post exploitation. What is the root user's password hash? So we can find this in, it should be Etsy Shadow Cat, Etsy Shadow. And we can grab that. It's going to be this first blob here. Uh, let's see. I think it's this entire first bit. So we'll try that. There we go. I was looking for the delimiter there. It is the colons. Uh, you won't be able to crack the root password hash, but you might be able to find a certain file that will give you consistent access to the root user account through one of the other services in the box. What is the full path to this file? Uh, so this is referring to, I would assume, an SSH uh, key. Uh, which is very common to find just left on servers. It's one of the things that I recommend checking for for persistence because if you can use an SSH key that's already in there and, well, it works, no reason to make your own, no reason to leave any trace, might as well just use what's already there for you. Uh, so if we find, let's see, present working directory, we want to go to cd root, ls, uh, let's see, ls tech lsa, uh, we do have an SSH directory, so cd.ssh, and it looks like we have an id underscore rsa file. Uh, that is our private key. So this one, the .pub, is our public key that we use and we want on this machine, and that's actually in the authorized keys here. This id underscore rsa is something that we can use to log in as root <laughs> remotely, repeatedly, so nice and easy. So we can go ahead and steal that. Uh, what is the full path to this file? That's going to be root.ssh and then id underscore rsa. There we go. 
download the key, copying and pasting it into a file on your own machine or attacking machine works. Uh, so we'll go ahead and cat ID underscore RSA and we'll grab this. One thing to keep in mind, I learned this the tough way as anyone that saw when I used to do Twitch streams, spaces at the beginning of this matters a lot. Make sure that you don't have spaces at the beginning of it. We can go ahead and go over here. Uh, we're already in wreath. I'll do sudo sue again because I prefer being root in my terminal. It's just easier on Kali. It's not the best for security practices, but it's a lot easier. Um, and I'm going to make dir loot, um, cd loot, uh, make dir web server, because I want to know where I found this loot, cd web server, and then nano id underscore rsa, and I'm going to paste that key. And again, make sure that you don't have spaces at the beginning of it or at the end of it. The ones at the beginning matter a lot more. And then we want to change the permissions on it. So we need to do a chmod 600. And then the key name, it's just going to be id underscore rsa. Otherwise, SSH will not work. Um, and we can actually go through and just SSH with that. I believe just using minus i id underscore rsa root at... 10, 200, I think it was 72, 200. I will have it memorized by the end of this. And then yes, and there we go. We can see that we have a full proper SSH shell, a lot better than even our upgraded uh, Netcat shell. This is just much more pleasant to work in. Otherwise, we have everything we need for now. Let's move on to the next section, pivoting. So we'll mark this as complete. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to hop into the Discord or into the subreddit and ask there. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video over task seven. But until then, happy hacking.